What's up YouTube and Facebook? Blue Dooley in the office today and we're going to be going over the Insignia 2.7 inch display dash cam. It films in 1080p full HD, records sound, has a 130 degree viewing angle, it also has a motion detector in it and a g-force sensor. Overall it's the only it's a pretty good little unit. I picked it up over Black Friday and ran it at work and around in my personal vehicle for the last week. I've run it in a few different vehicles. I had it in the wife's Jeep Liberty, my Dually, a Kenworth T800 and a Kenworth T880 at work. And then yesterday while James and I were out getting some supplies so he could do some home repair, we ran it in his Ford F-150. That way you can kind of see how it fits and everything and I wanted to know how easy it was to get in and out of more than just my truck. The only vehicle I had a problem with getting it to stick to the windshield was the wife's Jeep. It has some little black texture dots behind the uh, rear view mirror that I'm not really sure what they do. But they did keep the camera from sticking. In all three of the light duty vehicles, the Jeep the Dually and James Ford. The screen's actually small enough. It hides behind the rear view mirror really well so you don't even really know it's there, which is where I always mount them. The directions are excuse me. Insignia could have done a better job on the directions. It just gives a basic setup. And uh tells you what a few of the all the buttons do. And that's about it. It doesn't really kinda go into detail over some of the settings. Let me out! I'm stuck in your pocket! Oh, I have a text message. Overall, you know, the build quality is pretty good. It does film really well. I have a, I have a lot of clips we can show you. Um, some of the other things I liked, we'll get it turned on, I have it plugged into the computer with the supplied power cable. The cable itself says it's not for data transfer. It has, uh, this is micro USB, the other end is just a plain USB. The, uh, to plug it into the car, it actually has a little cigarette lighter plug. You just plug in there and then plug the USB end into that. The display, it, uh, it has a pretty clear display. I'm not sure how clear the other camera can pick it up. The buttons are nice and big, especially when you got big fingers like me. Settings, you can change resolution, the, for the loop recording, you can have it record in one minute, three minute, or five minute increments. You can have it record audio, you can turn that on and off. Date stamp, exposure, language, time setup, speaker volume, turn the beep on and off. The uh, auto display off, you can either have the display lit all the time, It'll turn off after one minute, three minutes, or five minutes. I have it set for three minutes. Format formats the micro SD card. Default setting version. And then it also has a headlights on reminder. If you need your dash cam to tell you to turn on your headlights, I don't think you should be driving. That's just me. You should know when to turn your headlights on. The motion detector, I turn that off mainly because at work when the truck's parked there's so much activity going on in the yard it would be recording constantly or I suppose you could leave it on and leave it plugged in uh, depending on what your power plug does it'll turn on and off if your power plugs keyed to the ignition in all of my vehicles and all the vehicles I ran it in if you left it plugged in it'd just record constantly so I unplug it the G4 sensor you can turn it off set it to low, medium, or high. It's set on medium. I never really had to brake hard like somebody really cut me off. So I'm not sure how much force it needs to trigger at medium. I have bounced a truck over a curb a couple of times at work to uh, get in or out of locations to drop off trusses and it never seemed to set it off. The uh, in here. This isn't a real high-end model. It doesn't do GPS. It doesn't say have, how fast you're going or where you are. 
and I went with a little less frills model because I do use it at work primarily and I didn't want to worry about dropping a more expensive one out of the truck when I got done at the end of the day. This one I found at Best Buy for $48, $49.99. It was a little over $50 with tax. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the performance. Like I said, with the exception of the wife's Jeep, every other vehicle I put it in, it stuck in real good. I think I have some footage saved of it falling off the Jeep's windshield once. That's always fun. The, uh, I did have it set to record in longer increments, and then I was like, eh, I probably don't need it to record in longer increments. It's probably your personal preference. The directions never mention anything of it, but to get it to save, well, to have it hold on to a video and not record over it, you have to actually tell it not to. I think if the G4 sensor triggers, it probably saves it too. Buttons over here in the corner, tap it, well, press it, and it saves the event. But the directions don't say, and I didn't find out until messing with it for, I don't know, almost a week, is if it's at toward the end, very end of a loop, it, when you, and you tell it to save, it'll actually start saving the next loop too. I'm not sure on the second count uh, how many, how close to the end of the loop it needs to be before it does that. The directions don't say. And I'm usually driving when I, and I was driving when I noticed it did it, so I couldn't actually read the screen. I have the screen turn off after three minutes, just because at work I don't really need it, and if I'm out late, I don't want the screen lighting up. There's a little blue light to indicate that it's on, and then there's a little red light that'll blink to tell you that it's recording. If you're have polarized sunglasses, you kind of have to move your head around a little bit or look under them to see that either one of those lights is on. Which again, that isn't a big deal to me. At night, they're very dim. You're like, oh yeah, it's on, but it's not so bright, it's really in your face. Uh, the view out of the uh, T800 was a little weird. I wasn't quite sure where to put it. You can actually see the visor and the hood. This is James now out in his Ford. Well, uh, the next clip we'll get to will be back in the dually, and I'll leave the sound playing for a little bit so you can kind of hear how well the microphone works. I got the radio on, you can hear the truck engine, that kind of thing. The microphone does pick up conversation pretty well, especially if you're like me and the wife and uh, talk loud. She has teacher voice, so she announces very clearly all the time. Uh, night vision, it in this clip it was pretty foggy, the video does get kind of grainy. Uh, headlight glare is pretty bad, but that might also be because the windshield isn't real clear. For uh, If you do a lot of night driving, I'd probably recommend you get a camera that has a night vision mode or uh, specifically states that it it has functions well at night. This clip here with some FedEx trucks is kind of the main reason why I got the dash cam in the first place. Uh, the pilot car, I, well we have a pilot truck and a few months ago somebody was in a big hurry a little further up uh, the road from where we're at here and they decided they had to pass me the two tractor trailers behind me and my pilot vehicle all at the same time and he nearly ended up running the pilot vehicle off the road and I kinda thought you know I, I really need a dash cam for that kinda stuff because if he had lost control and wrecked I mean the dash cam's the only thing to prove that the other guy was at fault I can't believe that FedEx truck stayed in the passing lane for, you know, almost an entire, almost an entire minute to get past me and the pilot vehicle. Overcast skies and fog in the daylight, it, it records well. The, uh, 
Most of the movement you see in the camera in the truck clips is just because the trucks ride a lot rougher than uh, a car or a pickup. Especially this uh, T800 I'm in right here. It's a real rough riding truck. Overall, as I've stated before, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the camera's performance. It works well for what I need it to, and I would recommend it if you're looking for kind of a budget entry dash cam and you want HD recording. I've seen a few that are cheaper, but they only film in like 720. So, overall, pretty happy. Wish Insignia did a better job with their directions. Hope this in video was informative and maybe a little entertaining. As always, hit like and subscribe, and I hope everyone had a good weekend.